Tonight. Tonight we're taking a trip about 35 minutes north of Hartford to Ashford, Connecticut. Some of you might know about the Hole in the Wall gang camp. Maybe you've heard of it. Some of you maybe not. The late actor Paul Newman, who lived in Westport, Connecticut, founded the camp back in 1988 and wanted to acknowledge luck, the role good luck played in his life and the role that bad luck plays in so many other lives, especially the lives of children battling cancer and other life-threatening illnesses. He wanted to create a place that they could go at no cost to them to feel safe and forget about their illness. Normally for these kids, going to camp would be completely off the table, but not here, and you'll see why in a moment. This isn't a sad place, surprisingly. It's the opposite. There are countless stories of children who were campers who are doing really well now. In fact, you're looking at one of those campers right now. Back in February, a fire ripped through one of the main buildings right in the center of the camp, burning it to the ground. Now, three months later, the Hole in the Wall gang camp is planning to rebuild, and they're being resilient, just like the kids and families they serve. Starting to receive numerous calls of a structure fire at that location. On the night of February 12th, a building right in the center of the 344-acre camp was burning, and burning fast. It just felt so violent that something you, you love could be attacked that violently. Jimmy Canton has been the head of the Hole in the Wall gang camp since 2002. He started as a volunteer counselor in 1988, camp's first year. When he started, camp was serving 288 kids each summer. Now it serves more than 20,000 children and their families all year round. But that night, this magical place was on fire. We're showing a column of smoke over the area. I came up Saturday morning and it was interesting as I was coming up, it really felt like I remember these feelings going to a funeral home and, and just the stomach tightening and bracing yourself for what you're gonna see. The building, which was home to the Arts and Crafts Center, the wood shop and the camp store was ablaze. To make matters worse, the building made of wood was connected to the dining hall. We pulled in and I walked around the corner and I just saw the smoke and the charcoal and the and the devastation and, um, and it took your breath away. But no sooner do I see that than I see the dining hall standing. I swear to you, it, it turned from grief to gratitude in a moment. That dining hall, the heart of the campground was miraculously spared and unscathed. Fire marshals later determined that it wasn't intentionally set, but the memories inside were what tugged at the camp community's heart. Obviously, nothing's been done yet. What's the plan to rebuild? Well, uh, it's nice and open. We will break ground as soon as our summer program is over. And that construction will go on from mid-August until mid-May, and it will be ready to, uh, to welcome our 2022 campers. If you were to walk around camp, you would notice some things different than the summer camp that you probably went to. A pool heated to 90 degrees year round with a sauna nearby, so children with sickle cell anemia can swim in a pool for the first time in their lives. And a wheelchair accessible treehouse with a 350 foot ramp, so wheelchair bound kids can experience being in a treehouse for the first time. If we fail to include a child because of their physical limitations or physical challenges, then we as a staff have failed. It's that easy. That these children have experienced enough exclusion and have lived enough marginalized lives outside of camp that when they come here, they should feel at all times completely included, safe, respected, and loved. The infirmary on campgrounds acts as a mini hospital. During the summer, volunteer nurses, oncologists, infectious disease specialists, emergency room doctors volunteer for a week at a time from surrounding children's hospitals to make sure that kids can continue their care while at camp. For parents, having a child with cancer or another life-threatening illness is a 24-7 job. Camp is a respite not only for the kids, but for the parents. A lot of the, the kids here are, and families, are resilient. Yes. And I think that building being burned down and being built back up personifies resiliency. What message do you think this process is going to send to families and kids here, seeing, seeing you guys build back? Yeah. What have our families taught us? We rise. That resilience, um, I, I think, fortifies everyone and, and certainly comes from the courage uh, and, and 
endless love and commitment that our families have for the care of their children. And you see that child after child after child. And there's, uh, there's strong purpose. Yeah, there's strong purpose because those, those families are, are really hurting. And, uh, and the, more, uh, the, more, um, the more rare the illness is, the more isolated those families are. You know, they don't have anyone to, to say, I totally get it. I, I hear you, this is what I did. Let me give you a hug, because I totally understand that feeling. But when those families, those parents come to camp, they no longer feel alone. And the team hears the gratitude daily. You changed my child's life. You, you, you gave me back, you gave me back the child I knew before they were diagnosed. Woo! <laughs> That's, that, it doesn't get better than that. You, you literally provide something for these parents that they never thought they could have for a child that they think they might not have one day. Yeah. And you deal with that on a daily basis. How? Uh, it, it, I think it's all about privilege, right? And what a privilege it is for us to be invited into that family's life and to be invited to be a friend of that child. So what's the secret? How do they do it all? It can't really be magic. For me, I would say that it's, it's, it's about healing. And it's, it's, it, uh, I've heard someone say recently that it is, um, this is a place um, that love built. And while Jimmy and the team work on that healing, carpenters using their hammers and nails will be healing the camp itself. So to build that community is, I mean, that's what I think camp does better than anything. It, it builds that community so that you don't feel alone. And that sense of connection does wonders for someone's emotional well-being so that they can leave here more peaceful, more open, more confident, more hopeful. I guess you can consider yourself lucky that maybe you didn't know about the Hole in the Wall gang camp because your children were healthy. But if you ask the camp community, they think they're the lucky ones. For years, I, I, I've heard it. It's the best kept secret in Connecticut. After all, it's been there since 1988. And rest assured, <laughs> the best kept secret in Connecticut isn't going anywhere. DJ, that was awesome. Can I get a high five? Well, last year, there was no in-person camp. It went virtual because of the pandemic. But now, over the course of the summer and the fall, camp will be hosting around 300 families in person and 850 campers and their families have been invited to take part in camp virtually. In one year, at the start of their 2022 camp season, it'll be back to normal, hopefully, with over 1,100 campers in person and over 20,000 children and families throughout all of their programs. Part of the proceeds from the upcoming Travelers Championship, by the way, go to the Hole in the Wall game camp each year. So if you go to the golf tournament, you're supporting camp. But it's more than money. They're always looking for volunteers. If you'd like to donate or get involved, you can find all of the information to do so on their website, which is holeinthewallgang.org. We'll also have a link to that on our website, fox61.com as well. The best kept secret in Connecticut is a secret no more. The News at 10 will be right back right after this.